to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Woo! everyone. Woo! Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. Last yeah. blood warning, beautiful New York August Monday. The rain makes me feel good. I oh. like the rain. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> Does Shannon it? hates the rain, but yeah. just like when you wake up on a Saturday morning and uh, it's gray out and you're still in bed and you can have like a cup of coffee in bed, that makes me feel really cozy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into our stories, I'm serving up a little first course for all of us here. Okay. The Kardashian sisters, Courtney, Chloe, and Kimberly, are actually all in sisters therapy right now, <laughs> according to last night's episode. Isn't That's... that interesting? Like going to, I've heard of marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, obviously, I think in some circumstances there's like more familial counseling when you're like young and going with your parents, but I've never heard about three just siblings going together to hash it out. But don't you think they need it? Yeah, they definitely <laughs> do. They treat, they treat each other so poorly. And I feel like normally the way they solve their problems are like, let's have a sexy photo shoot and forget about it. <laughs> but literally their last fight As was about does. a yeah. photo shoot, so they're like, what do we do now? Yeah. Yeah. Go to therapy. But That's I, so true. I, I also imagine their therapist like listening to their problems, being like, "Oh my god, right. they got these bitches for real." Yeah. Like this is the photo shoot. This is why they're fighting about. But... I actually don't think therapists would ever act like that. No, well, of course <laughs> not. <laughs> not. Not a good not, one. Not a good one. Not really. I it's think in their that, head, maybe. you know, like contextual, like contextually, everyone has their problems that feel big to them. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the Kardashians aren't petty, but I'm sure, like you know, if you watched like the first episode and the second episode last night. The emotions are very real. Like yeah. yelling at your sister that she, you don't think she works hard enough, she works for nothing. Yeah. Like, so there's this big feud we're seeing right now between Courtney and Chloe and Kim. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with Courtney not really wanting to be a part of the show mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah. And usually a parent helps to mediate, but Chris, Chris is like, Chris is just like, she's like yeah. pouring fuel on the fire. Yeah. you all go yeah, to are annoying. <laughs> go to therapy, yeah. right. we'll film it. Every yeah. time they're complaining, she's just like, cha-ching, cha-ching, exactly. cha-ching. Well, uh, it's kind of funny to watch. We'll keep an eye on them. I hope their therapy sessions are fruitful. Yes. But let's talk about some other celebrities let's right do it. now. Yeah. Some of the biggest names in young Hollywood were at last night's Teen Choice Awards in LA. Nick Cannon and Lily Pons hosted the annual ceremony, which honors the best in music, TV, and film. The Greatest Showman, Riverdale, and Love, Simon were among the night's big winners, and as usual, celebs did not disappoint with their fashion choices on the red carpet. With a recap of last night's beauty hits and misses, it's Build Brunch resident beauty expert, Delina Medin. Woo! Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Delina. Hello, hello. Hi, girl. Hi. Thanks for welcome, joining. welcome. Yes, yeah, so like, welcome you know, to our table. Let's all have a uh, We have so you? much to unpack from last night. Yeah, I know. There's so much going on. Yeah, I watched the pre show too on Twitter. Oh, I did not oh, watch wow. that. Yeah, apparently now, like, I guess pre shows are now on, like, online. Yeah. It was the younger crowd anyway, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, I guess. The maybe, teens. Yeah. The teens. Yeah. Yes. Well, apparently 150 million votes per cast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so That's intense. If only, maybe I think for 2023, teens' choice president, right. maybe we'll get a lot of people to vote. <laughs> Yeah, right? yeah, maybe. exactly, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so let's talk about the beauty. Um, who, t for you last night, was really like a standout? Who just like really brought it? Um, I think Lucy Hale okay. was amazing. I mean, she had the most color. Mm. She had that green, she had a green eyeshadow that really went really well with her her outfit. So I feel like that was, I don't know. That so was, as that opposed was my... to like naturals and nudes, like yeah. you think like having a color pop, like that's really hot right now. Yeah, I also think I did like, not know that. I did yeah. not know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh wow, really? Yeah. Well, I'm you, super you both, you both kind of have a color pop going on right now though. You have like this pink. Well, we and did, you have, like, I didn't little... do it. So. Oh, yeah, right, okay, <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> it wasn't your choice. Yeah. Right, whenever okay, cool. I do makeup, I always think, yeah. okay, I want to look as natural as possible. To me, that's always been what's beautiful. But then like in the last couple years, I feel like we see like more color. Yeah. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the color is really more in like the cheek and in the lip and in the eye. I think that like makeup itself is just going more natural with like your foundation is more natural, you have less makeup on, but you have the color pop in like, you know what I mean, a focus feature. Right. Yeah. Are there any so. color pop colors to stay away from? Mm, good Ooh, question. that's a good question. Mm. I think there are colors that are gonna look better on you uh, based on your undertones in your skin, but I don't think necessarily there's colors to like stay away from. I'm very much an, you know, we should experiment. No, yeah. we should have fun. Even but, your yeah. nail color, I feel like that's such a cool color I that like you. looks yeah. amazing on you, but like <laughs> you don't you. see everyone rocking that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just recently started, I used to be a nude girl. 
Okay. I used to always wear nude. That sort of, yeah. Yeah, I, like I live very for that. Nude yeah, so now I was just like, oh, well. So you're you know, a nude let me girl too, right, Shannon? Yeah, yeah, I'm totally nude under yeah. all these clothing. <laughs> 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 yep, no. Girl. Yeah. 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 yeah, Um, that's so cool. I feel like I always try to like um, be natural also, but yeah. color pops aren't really exciting. Mm -hmm. I've been trying I like to do. Have on. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's cute. I've been trying to do just like a big bold like eyeshadow with no eyeliner at all. I feel like that's okay. really in right now. Okay. Or is that just Haley Williams that I'm obsessed with? <laughs> no, I like that. Like yeah. a bold you said like a bold eyeshadow with a, a yeah, liner. Yeah, with like no liner. Oh no just liner. Just like bleh. That's cute. Yeah. With like a lot of mascara maybe? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I feel like I just added that and you were like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are like, eyelashes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I just okay. want to rub eyeshadow on my face. You're like, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Nice. Like, nice. Yeah. Shan. Exactly. Uh, another person I noticed last night was Chloe Grace Moretz, who like Yes. Always hits it with her fashion. She's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she always just looks her really outfit. nice. She's always serving Do we have a photo looks. of her? I want to look at her face. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, what is she so weird. young, but she yeah. looks so like sultry? What is it? Is it the dark lip that makes her look so like? I know. Isn't she like start, like even her stance? Like she's just like I know I brought it. Yeah. yeah. You know. She's just um, like a sexy ten year old. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Um, I love that. <laughs> no time out for me, mom. Like, okay. She also has yeah, like, I like her such outfit. an amazing face. Like she has. I mean, like she's not like stereotypically beautiful for Hollywood. Yeah. She has like features. It's very interesting. Yeah, like that are so interesting even when she doesn't wear makeup. So mm. it's. I feel like she's a fun like palette to work on like. yeah yeah definitely I would love to do her makeup the bold lip though is like the takeaway from this look though right for sure yeah the dark lip I think is really pretty and then also just I like I mean I like the shorts with the jacket I think it's like super fun love it's that. very like young fresh I'm gonna try that yeah same <laughs> I low-key kind of wanted to wear that today just because she wore it yesterday you kind of are doing like the long a little sort bit. of blazer look yeah, yeah. she I kind like, of inspired my look yeah, a little bit I feel like we see more like <laughs> menswear in like mm. female outfits right now that are really hot and like I feel that from the oversized jacket so mm -hmm. Definitely. Cool. All right, and then what about the host, Nick Cannon, who... <laughs> oh, my God. He is always... His style game has gotten so out of control. <laughs> I mean, I remember when he was hosting America's Got Talent, he'd always wear those, like, studded shoes. Yeah. But now he's kind of become, like, a trendsetter. He's, like, the perfect person to host this award show. Can like, you, yeah. Like, do you believe, like, him and Mariah Carey were married? <laughs> and they I have know. babies. Yeah. I do believe it. They're both he, super eccentric. Yeah, and he kind of has, like, swag. You don't think yeah, so? in a weird way. Like he's <laughs> yeah. always wearing turbans and hats and stuff, and just is this a cool outfit? I mean, <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wear it myself yeah. personally, but what I think it's like it? perfect for the Teen Choice Awards. But it, it's kind of weird like, that yeah. Lily Pond's like just falls so flat next to him. <laughs> like I'm like, oh, you guys co-hosted. Seems like he was like, I don't want to work with this like Vine star. Get her off stage. <laughs> she couldn't be wearing the more like subtle outfit, like the yeah. black. And just well, it probably looks really sophisticated mm -hmm. and hot, but like yeah. next yeah. to him, it's just like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. 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 Were there any other trends that you saw on the red carpet that are like really speak to where we're going or things that are just super popular right now? Uh, I need, I'm asking for a friend. Or even more, right. personal, <laughs> more personal favorites. Yeah. You know? Um, I really like, I mean, I, I was mentioning this, the, the skin trend where it's just like really just like beautiful like skin. I think Normani did a really good job yes. with that. Yeah. Um, she looked amazing. I felt like, and she was fun. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like she was wearing like this really cool outfit. Her outfit was actually from Tommy Hilfiger. Yeah. Um, like, I thought that was amazing. cute. I just like her skin. Like I just like her face. She so just the best so trend cute. is having no acne. Yeah. 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 That is really hot right Good now. Good genetics are so in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Her skin is always super glowy. How do, uh, this is another personal question. How do they yeah. get that like glow? Yeah. Well, one of the things you could do is you could start with an oil on the skin. I think a lot of people don't realize oh. that you could put on moisturizer and then you could put on some oil. Um, afterward and then go in with your foundation and it just gives you like this super beautiful glow and it looks amazing and then when you put powder on top of that it just looks smooth mm -hmm. and it doesn't necessarily look like um, like you have too much makeup on. Mm. Oh, yeah. yes. And the less powder, the better. Yep. Especially for red carpet. Yep, I, I've always said that. Yeah? yeah. Always. I feel like makeup. you have so much to teach us. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to have you back again soon because I want to talk about more red carpets and ways to make my face glowy like that. Totally. Yeah. Guys, give it up for Delina. She's glowy. Woo! Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Marvelous Mrs. Mizell will be back for season two. The American period dramedy starring Rachel Brosnahan and Michael Zegan has already won many Golden Globes and Critics' Choice Awards for its first season. Let's take a look at the teaser for season two. Relationships should be private, don't you think? Amen. So are you dating? What? You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. If that's not a deterrent for nuclear war, I don't know what is. Forget your troubles, 
come on, can't ah! baby. Chase chickens and we're going to the Catskill. Hallelujah, happy before the judgment day. What group of total and complete assholes needs a skating rink in the middle of summer? Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy, get ready. Tits up. Tits up. Thank you, everybody. Woo yeah. Woo. That trailer Tits makes up. me want to sing Tits more than up, do stand up. Tits up. That's I what we that. say to each other every time we every go on the show. Yeah. Tits, Tits up. up. And then Lucas and I are like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't have titties. <laughs> Lucas has titties. Actually, I'm just I actually nice rack. Oh, okay. I guess I'm no, the only No, he has like one. really nice titties. I work Aww. out. They're like, they're like, yeah. okay, they're whatever. Pecs. They're called yeah. pecs. They're pecs. Oh. No, they're his titties. They're, titties. <laughs> they're like ripped titties. Yeah, ripped yeah. titties. Ripped titties. I'm, I'll take it. I'll take it. Good. Um, I, this show won the Golden Globe for Best um, Comedies, written by Amy Sherman Palladino, who, of mm. course, created Gilmore Girls. And I have not seen it. I, I do want to watch it because everyone seems to love it. But it does kind of seem like the Gilmore Girls take on stand-up comedy. You guys would know you guys are oh. stand-ups, but like, is it a little ah. bit like? Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really like the show. I think it's really fun. Ellie and I have spoken about it a lot because they're both stand-ups. It's just funny. There's like a storyline where instead of like, you know, hitting the clubs and actually doing her set, she's just like at house parties and dinner <laughs> parties and be like, I'm so funny with a bunch of nobodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who isn't? Right. <laughs> like, who like, isn't? kill at a dinner it's party. It's so true. Yeah. Like, yeah. comedians have to like go out and perform and struggle and bomb and she's just like, there's this great cocktail party up on the Upper West Side. Let me test my jokes out on Benny. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. But it's fun to watch. I still really like it even though yeah. I have my qualms about how realistic it is. And I'm excited to see Season two, season one left off where, um, just a little backstory, her husband was the one who was doing stand-up, mm. and she said, okay, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna do stand-up, and I think he then sees that she's doing stand-up and she's killing it at the end of season one. So I'm excited to see how their marriage can handle that, because as everyone knows, it's impossible for the woman to be successful and the man to still love her. It's impossible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you think, though, the fact that she's not in clubs is like representative of the era? Like, could women go do stand-up in clubs? Like, did, were, was the only option dinner parties? I mean, it, at least in the show, they do let her get up in the club, okay. but she's like full titties out. Like, she goes very vulgar very quick, and that's definitely, at the time, was not chill. Yeah. Right. So she ends up getting arrested a lot during the show. Um, which <laughs> magically like leads to just more opportunities. <laughs> we all right. know when you get arrested, you meet more connections. Well, you know, last week Shannon was doing a set and Shannon got arrested. Mm. Yeah, I do this great bit where I'm like, watch my labia talk, and the cops were like, that's not cool. They said no, they stop, said no. Yeah. stop doing that. They and then like, mm -hmm. the agency called you. Yeah. yeah, and now I'm booked, and guys, this is my last week here. <laughs> I'm a big time comedian. You have an HBO special coming out Yeah, now. it's yeah. just my labia. my labia talk. <laughs> my labia, yeah. Um, but, uh, this is this this show along with like Mozart in the Jungle and Transparent kind of goes with Amazon's niche comedies, which I think now is kind of this may be the last of that because if you all don't know, um, Jen Salki used to uh, help run NBC, took over Amazon Studios, and she just, she said that Amazon's go for more broader, bigger mm -hmm. shows. So this is kind of which I appreciate with the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel or whatever is that it's kind of like this niche quirky show, which I don't think we're going to get a lot from from Amazon anymore. Keep hmm. saying we gotta just like own gotta it now. Own it now. I mean, I don't know for sure, but I think we're gonna start hearing like bigger shows that have a broader appeal. But Amazon's been known for these like small, quirky comedies. Yeah, yeah. and this is also like a weird, like weirdly feels very much like a period piece when you watch it. Yeah. Um, it looks like Mad Men. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. But with humor. Not right. as much depression. Right, yeah. <laughs> Mad Men is slow, man. So it's a dark, dark show. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on to another show we're really excited about. Julia Louis-Dreyfus is back, guys. The actress recently shared a photo of herself and her co-stars while at a table read for the hit HBO series, Beep. Production for the show was put on hold while Dreyfus underwent breast cancer treatment. But she's back at work in the show's finale for the show's final season, which returns in 2019. Yes. Oh, I'm so yeah. excited! So I'm happy. so happy she's just back and doing well. That was so so sad to oh, hear yeah. her diagnosis and yeah. to to know that they stopped like filming for a while and just to know she's healthy and back in this role that brings so many people so much happiness. Like mm -hmm. I just want her to be happy and healthy. Like this is such good news. And I think going back to work makes her happy. I mean, she's somebody who has just consistently chosen these roles where she shines and she's won yeah. every. I mean, she's won more every Emmy. Every season she's won best. Yeah, yeah, she's won more Emmy awards mm -hmm. than like anybody. The only actress to win yeah. best lead actress for three different roles. Yes. 
Wow. So she's so phenomenal. So for me, like, I think she really loves her work. So the fact that she's healthy enough to go back, yeah. like, I feel like people should watch just for that. And it's the final season. And season seven. I mean, Veep is one of those shows that consistently got better every every season. And it's one, like, if, if you talk to any DC insiders, they actually like Veep the best of all those DC yeah. shows because it's so, well, it's, it's like, it's extreme, but it's so witty and funny and tells these really great stories about, like, just how dysfunctional politics, politics can be. Right. And it's also funny how, like, I think recently when, when she's won, she's, like, be, became a satire to an hour sobering documentary because of what <laughs> politics has become now. So I'm just super excited to see her in this role again for one final season. I mean, it's such a good role. I'm so nervous about how they're going to wrap it up, though, because there's so much stuff up in the air, including, she's like... Running, yeah. Yeah, and she's running again, I, and then, I, like, her daughter having, like, the baby. and the with Marjorie. Like, yeah, Marjorie. she named the baby after... Right. Her, yeah. Well, I, I always thought, like, the show will somehow end with her back in the beep desk. Like, it has so to, So maybe right? she runs for president, somehow has to, like, then accepts being the vice presidential, vice presidential running mate or whatever to someone. Because then, and that's the end with her. I can imagine her ending being like, fuck, like, I'm back here again. Or they end with her just walking in the woods, like, Hillary up and Trump Possibly. Applaud, just like. <laughs> but she's had so many great <laughs> quotes. I, one of my favorite ones, um, why don't you put on your running shoes and get to the fucking point? Yeah. I love that. It's yeah. just like, and if men, could get, if men get pregnant, you get an abortion ATM. Yeah. She's had so many just funny moments. The writers are so quick on The writers are so great. Yeah. I know. Do you guys watch? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for it to come back. I think it's going to be a great season. I haven't seen all and... the seasons. That's why I'm not talking. Oh, really? That's okay. Watch uh, it. Beep. Everyone, if you have not watched up. Beep, it's one of the best. But uh, moving on to another HBO comedy we all love. The hit HBO comedy series Insecure returned last night for its highly anticipated third Woo! season. The show, which stars actress and co-creator Issa Rae, follows two longtime friends. They navigate the ups and downs of work, romance, and life in Los Angeles. Guys. I need Another round of applause. We love TV. I needed TV. this in yeah. my life. We love TV. I love Insecure so much. Like, for me, the show Girls was garbage. And this is, like, so much more representative, not of just black women, but of, like, what it's like to be in your 20s, 30s. Nothing, you're not confident about a lot of stuff. Dating is a mess. Your job's a mess. Like, I feel like it just perfectly captures those yeah. things. Yeah, I also love that, like, Girls was so, like, ugh, because it was, like, nepotism. No! Yeah. And this show, it's, like... Oh, this woman made herself, like she mm -hmm. brought herself into this world. Mm -hmm. Like she was just a YouTuber. She didn't like, you know, have any like special connections. And I just love the show because it's so true to like the YouTube series and who she is. Oh, right. Like all those scenes where she's just in the mirror, like, you know, Rapping. like all those, all those scenes I'm, I think are so funny and are kind of like to me just very raw and still like just her being like she's talking to a camera almost mm -hmm. and being like, I'm a self-made little YouTuber. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, Insecure, I, I did not watch her, her YouTube series, but I knew of her when this was coming out, so I was really excited, and I just, like, fell in love with her immediately. The show is so good, it's so funny, it is so real, mm -hmm. and I just feel like that shows to her testament how talented she is. I'm so happy that HBO, like, took a shot, and they should be doing this more often mm -hmm. and giving a person of color this chance. Mm -hmm. And Larry Wilmore co-created, and of course, he's an established writer and creator, so I'm yeah. sure that kind of helped. But, like, this is, you can tell it's like, this is Issa's show. Yeah. It's Issa's vision, and I love how every season you get more and more, her friends get more involved. I love Natasha Rothwell, oh, who plays so Kelly funny. on the show. Yeah. Um, so I just, I'm so excited for this season to see more of her friends and more of, like, that dynamic, which is, like, it's, like, girls, but funnier yeah. like it just more I could just you know relate more I haven't watched it and I have so much to watch I'm just like in one of those moments where I have so much on my plate I don't know what yeah. to choose next you should watch Insecure and it's like yeah. so <laughs> hard though everyone says that about like every show they recommend and I'm just like I'm struggling to keep up yeah. like it's really hard I, I would recommend Insecure I would recommend it and you know who's not going to be in this season right Lawrence, Lawrence. guys that's what it is, Life Without Lawrence, season three. Which yeah. now, looking back, that finale was so great because they had this amazing goodbye and they left a little bit of hope left that they were going to get back together. Right. But it really was them breaking up. And it was like, we had to grieve that like it was a real breakup. Right. And now she's heading into season three with like a whole new thing. But It also shows good because like the way like they can just like, you know, leave a character behind, like the way real life is and her storylines will has to go somewhere else. Yeah. You can't get the same thing over and over again. Yeah. But in that season two finale, they do this kind of like before they break up, you do like a montage of like all the like their life together. Him proposing them having a baby together. Of like, what she thought. What she thought could be. Yeah. It, yeah. That's like La La Land, the end. Yes. 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 Similar. Similar. Yeah. Those like, are particularly heartbreaking. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Oh. I hate yeah. that. That makes me want to die when I see stuff like no, that. No, but you should watch oh. it because no, it's also funny. But the show is more <laughs> funny. Also so sad though. It's like, look what your life would have been like with Ryan. I'm like, oh. Uh, <laughs> but, but don't feel. But Issa, Issa's good. This season, season three from here last night, just she's a Lyft driver too. Yeah. And literally, she pulls up like, hey, are you? 
Issa, hey, bleh, and the so guy just throws up in her car. Like, uh, it's like within the first five seconds. Everyone's so. thrown up in a cab. No? No. No. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You like open the door. Yeah. I actually was in a cab one time. I didn't throw up, but I was with my sister, and my sister was puking like crazy, and hey. she was puking out the window. Yeah. But she, it's out the window, you know, you're still hitting some of the side of the cab yeah. and the cab driver is getting upset and, you know, oh. it just happens. I, I'm always like, time out! I make them pull over, right. then you open the door and project out. Yeah, like, you gotta go, Ugh, yeah. you gotta shoot it out, It's you so know? much easier to do that when you're not blacked out. <laughs> oh, but if you or have, like... Or on the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm really good at it. Pull over on the highway! <laughs> <laughs> pull over! They always do, though. I mean, you might kill some people, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, watch Insecure on HBO. <laughs> Yay! Attention, cat lovers across the globe. A cat sanctuary on the Greek island of Syros is looking for a caretaker to feed and nurture at least 55 cats. The dream job comes equipped with a small house and a modest salary for about six months. Mm -hmm. Woo! Wow, the dream job. This truly sounds like the most disgusting job ever. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be with two cats on an island, let alone 55, <laughs> shitting all around me, eating. It's so disgusting. If someone has an apartment and they have a cat and you walk into the apartment, you smell it, you smell it immediately. Smell I do not like when that smell hits you in the face. Uh-oh. No, you do not smell it. If a person is a good pet mom or pet Dad, they take care of their cat, they clean the litter box, and it doesn't smell bad. I live in a studio apartment, and you can never smell that I have a cat. People you are can't like, smell they definitely have a cat. No, no, I have, I, have people come, I have people come over my house all the time, okay? This is what happens, though. Cat owners become, this is a sad numb thing that happens to cat owners. They become numb to their own smell. Yeah. And it's a very <laughs> sad and scary thing when cat people walk around saying they don't smell like cat when they do smell like cat. No, nope, I ask people all the time. I'm like, hey, tell me if it smells. They come over and they're like, no, this is great. You have a cat? Where is she? And then my cat walks up like, what's up? I don't even see. <laughs> this is like, a great oh, idea. Yeah, she's like, here. ride, smell it. And they're yeah, like, yeah. this hole is fresh. Um, oh. No, you know what's funny is that so many people sent me this article, like, and they were like, Shannon, you need to apply for this job. But literally, this was my childhood. Like, but, I grew wait. up in Puerto Rico on an island, and I had so many cats. Like, the highest number I hit was 35 at once. <laughs> and I also had... 35 cats? Yeah. Were they outdoor cats? Yeah, there was one indoor cat, Reba, and then the rest of them were... <laughs> of course Reba's yeah. inside. Reba yeah. has to be inside. Reba yes. is an indoor Reba. cat, yeah. Yeah. Reba. She was named after Reba McIntyre. Of course, of course. Yeah. Of course yeah. <laughs> Um, and she was an indoor cat, and she was very mean. But then all the uh, street cats were like really chill and cool, yeah. and it was great. And I, I lived that reality already. So, and I didn't get paid for it though. Yeah, that right. kind of sucks. I feel like this is more, which should be really for the person, like the lonely cat person who really doesn't give a shit about pretending anymore. It's like fuck yeah. it, I'm gonna just do this. Leaning into it. Le for sure. Lean in, Sheryl Sandberg. Lean, lean in. This it. is like a go for it. I'm with Allie. This is my personal nightmare. Totally. Right. One, I'm allergic to cats, so I would be dead. And then two, they're just kind of. Gross. I used to have two cats. They were they got really chubby and they were total divas. We were kind of they were more like puppies than cats. The way they kind of just like act around people. That's what people always say I about know, good but cats. But then I started fostering. Like dogs. Then I started fostering puppies, and I was like, no, they ain't. They're not like these puppies. Um, and they were cute. But I will say though, I remember my mom's been walking in one day once we got rid of them. They, we literally sent them to a farm. They were for, okay. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, the smell's gone. And I was like, what smells? Like, oh, it smelled like cat in here for a while. I was like, oh, oh fuck. See, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. It's scary because you don't know how your own home smells. <laughs> so this is a bigger issue that I've thought about many times. You do not I know. I like cats. They're you fine. You do not know how, how your own home smells. <laughs> you have to leave your home for a couple weeks and return to it. And then you go, oh, this is the smell of my home. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon's cat woman. I'm so kill you. grumpy right now. Yeah. I hate when you guys cat bash on the show. You know cats mean everything to me. No, you cats know, are great. Cats, cats are smart. Cats are cats agile. Are fine, <laughs> but think about it. Think about it. They poop in a box. I don't like cats. Yeah, but think about it. You're going on the street and you're like, your dog's pooping, and then you're like, go, oh, I'm gonna put a little plastic bag in my hand. And you go, But it's not. And then you carry it around for a couple blocks, and then you either like find a trash can or some of you just leave the shit on the street you yeah. fucking nasty dog lovers that's true new york city does become a toilet to the dogs yeah. and I, that is un, that is unacceptable no you get fined if, first of all that don't don't change the what we're just oh here. look you don't you like talking about dog our problems dogs are amazing dogs, so are cats. dogs give you more love than cats. that's not true you're stereotyping cats and i'm not yeah. gonna be here for it. i'm not gonna lick know. your face yes my cats 
sleeps in my bed with her head on my pillow looking at me. Yeah. And like when I'm watching TV, and she's like, on and my I don't chest. smell like a cat. I don't. <laughs> we just spoon all night long, me and my kitty. And I don't smell like a litter box. You don't. Or is, do I? And you guys no. aren't telling me. Is that why like, I, I keep on you. asking on my crush and he keeps on saying no? Is it because I smell like a litter you box? You smell good. You do you smell, smell good. good. I don't, I'm not worried about you. I'm just curious about your apartment. This is such a no, no, I love getting Come Shannon. Come on so over, baby. Worked out. Come I on. think we should all just get fish. Come on over, fish. Yeah. fish. Yeah. Those are stinky, okay? No, I don't like fish. I don't fish, fish really are. You know what I don't like? Birds. Birds. Oh, birds. oh my no. God. I hate birds. Ooh, no, I don't care if people have um, like, like, uh, like rats or mice I'll or like little no. Have you seen the rat guy in New York City that just walks around with the four rats like on his ew, shoulders? Ew, ew. That no, is I have not. Like and he dies okay. like orange and purple. They're if like I were, no color. Okay, that is a person. <laughs> that is a person that, that shouldn't, I will not allow. I won't allow. That is a person you if won't allow. If I were in charge of America, that person would be wow, stripped away. Wow, another white man <laughs> telling us what he won't allow. <laughs> Rat guy? That's disgusting. <laughs> he loves his rats. Know. Like she loves the cats and she loves yeah. the dogs. I don't know. No, 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 no. Cats are guys. They're all fucking animals. Cats are one yeah. thing. Rats? Oh, they're yeah. an animal. Come on. No. Rats That's are cute. cute. They are cute and they are lovable. Shannon, you're losing me. You're losing me. No, you're really? losing me. I had seriously. you with the cats. You're losing me. You would they're not disgusting. have a pet rat, Shannon. <laughs> I mean, if I connected with a rat, I would bring it home. Would you, Ron Weasley? Yes. What day the pet rat? You know, see, what you you scabber who turned out to be <laughs> a, a what death do you eater. Mean connected with the rat. Their like, souls connect. Yeah, like, like if I was like, um, and, you know, in the subway, and then a rat was like, no. what the hell? <laughs> I'd be like, oh, what's up? Shannon, one to hang time tonight? I saw a rat fall from the ceiling, almost on a person. So I'm assuming that's when you'd be like, oh, we just connected with the rat. That's called a fucking rat meat Shannon, cute. I was more referencing like you connecting with a rat in a pet store. Do not connect oh, with New York City rats. rats carry so many diseases. Yeah. And so do humans, though. I mean, have you been on dating apps? Everyone are you has through, a, are you a false equivalence between human and rats? Is that where we are now? I've yeah. met a lot of guys who are like rats. Yeah, yeah. Wait, but also Snake, I don't like. Girl. I know I'm going back to this, but like I really don't think people should have pet birds. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're just. They like, really freak me out. I'm like, what? They're smart though. No, you can talk yeah. to them. You can teach them to talk also. And Any like, tricks? there's a scene in Pretty Little Liars oh, where um, there was like a murder and the bird was able to give some clues about who the murderer <laughs> was. So I think we should all have a pet bird and be like, if I get killed, you tell them who yeah. did it. My yeah. uncle is a vet. He has like 30 birds. And my cousin, mm. Noah, he's always out of the house. No one knows where he is. Whenever my <laughs> uncle or anyone enters the house, the parrot goes, where's Noah? <laughs> where's <laughs> Noah? <laughs> That's it. I love that. Uh. <laughs> uh. And now it's time for our special guest. Billboard magazine says she's Alternative's next big voice, and Rolling Stone declared she's an artist you need to know. Please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to the incredible singer-songwriter Bishop Briggs. <laughs> I was just dying. <laughs> you guys, like we were all like shaking backstage, just, like <laughs> laughing so hard. Oh, what is you? your animal? Oh, Do you like you cats or dogs? I love cats, but no! yes! I know, <laughs> like there was a lot of things you were saying that like me and my sister were just like, that's us. Like the right. minute, the minute that like advertisement came up, my sister said that she quit. Like she quit working. Oh, oh really? Really? Going done. she literally quit in She's front like, of me. Right. I didn't realize it was that easy to leave. Yeah. But. Wow. Aww. Well, yeah. 55 cats on an island, I guess so. Exactly. Yeah. If she and doesn't I can't... get that job, I feel like Shannon could hook your sister up though with some cats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can't believe your background. That's insane. <laughs> oh my God, that's such a nice way to put it, my background. <laughs> <laughs> People are usually like, I can't believe your mental illness. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks a lot, your guys. Best friend. <laughs> that yes. is beautifully said. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, but we're not here to talk about cats, though. So you sadly. have a new single coming out this Friday, yes. baby. Yeah. You yes. have a tour coming up. Yeah. 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 Yes, I'm really excited. I mean, this is uh, one of those songs that is very direct, and I feel like sometimes it's easy to hide behind your own metaphors and poetry, and I like to really lean into dark mm -hmm. lyrics. And with this, it was one of those songs that was written, and I was like, oh, this is so funny, like, I'm not gonna release this. <laughs> and uh, it's very, it's about kind of like a more intimate side of my life, and uh, I mean, like, the whole hook is, uh, yeah, he's fucking crazy, but he's still my baby. Mm. Um, doesn't matter, because he's so damn good in bed. Uh -huh. And so when Woo. I first showed my uh, parents, I showed them over Skype. <laughs> <laughs> and they are 
these very, very sweet Scottish people. Right. Mm. And so um, I didn't think about it until the chorus came when like those parts of it came in. Yeah. Um, and uh, I definitely was bright red. <laughs> I was like looking down at the ground. I didn't know how to handle it. Um, but yeah, but I'm really excited. It feels exciting to release something that kind of scares me. Um, but that's just because of, I think, like the Scottish mm -hmm. upbringing yeah. and like Catholic guilt. It's Catholic guilt. Yeah. Oh, it's real. Yeah. That it's is so real. real. That is so real. And so, um, yeah, but I feel like as a woman, I'm like, this is what I talk about with my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. It's like all the time. And so it feels very liberating to be releasing something that's, you know, kind of more sexually forward. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, you know, having confidence with it, despite the Catholic guilt. Right. right. Yeah. That is embedded in my soul. That's awesome. Do you feel that that level of openness, like with this single, is a step away or from music you've done previously? Like, because you say you're particularly nervous about this, like that well, being that real. Well, I have other songs. Like, I have this song called River mm -hmm. that has a lot of implications. Which is amazing. Oh, yeah, really? I was going to say, we all yeah. know River. Yeah. We all yeah. know River. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so happy to hear that. That's insane. <laughs> Um, but there are a lot of um, things that are implied with River where like it could be about something mm -hmm. sexual, mm -hmm. but I could always be like, it's about a river. Mm -hmm. oh. um, <laughs> but with this, it's it feels a lot more direct. Yeah. Right. So I feel like there are things that I have released that have felt vulnerable, of course, um, but there probably hasn't been something that I have spoken uh, maybe as like directly with like girlfriends over wine mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some of the more depressing things for sure, of course, but definitely not like my sex life. I yeah. definitely haven't really put that out there. It's more about like vulnerability. Right. But I guess this is another form of it. And what's your process like? Like how long does it take to write a song and Ooh. kind of create? It depends. I mean, with baby in particular, every time I say baby, I want to be like, <laughs> baby. baby. Yeah, I love um, that shirt. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, our new merch. it's our new merch. It's our new merch. Oh my some. God, I'll, I'll give you some. Um, but with this particular song, uh, it was a very, um, I think because the minute it started, I kind of took away the pressure of it ever being released mm. because of the content of it. So it just kind of flowed. Mm. Um, and uh, I mean, I'm someone that like, I always am writing on my phone mm -hmm. uh, on like the notes app of anything that happens or any kind of like trigger words that I think could be used in a song. So I'm always trying to keep it mm -hmm. on and keep it fresh, yeah. for sure. I read that uh, you realized that you wanted to be a singer when you were at a karaoke bar in Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> what? What was the song you were singing, karaoke? Uh, it was, uh, okay, well, first of all, it was my dad singing Frank Sinatra, which okay. to this day, cool. seriously, he's really good. Oh, and yeah. I know, like, you know, people are very biased about their appearance, I'm well, sure. Well, we'll have Mon. We'll have yeah. Mon. Yeah, perfect, <laughs> perfect. Uh, he better not outshine me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he, he was the one that I saw, and then I went up and I just did, like, a little small song, Greatest Love of All. Of course. Whitney Houston. Oh, just oh, a little, little small, small song. song. Yes. yes. <laughs> But can I make it clear, though, just to everyone here yeah. as well, like, I get when you, like, hear that, you're like, oh, she was a mini Christina Aguilera. Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> At all. Okay. It literally sounded as you would think it would sound right. when a four-year-old sings, or, like, yeah. a five-year-old sings. Um, so it was uh, it was not good at all. Right. Very, very bad. And I actually, for some reason, couldn't let it go. So I sang it every year. Love it. Oh. Every Dedication. year. Yeah. Uh, for, I think it was five years. I continued, <laughs> wow. continued singing. Oh continued trying people, to get that when note. When you say, I believe children of the future, like, oh, my God, I got this kid off. So like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, so, yeah, so that was definitely my first, uh, first experience. And I really never let it go. Yeah. I love it. And you yeah. go from that to write-ups and Rolling Stone and Billboard. So yeah. what does that feel like now that Thank you're you. sort of, like, coming into your own and, and making a name for yourself. Oh my gosh, well, I loved your introduction. <laughs> I loved, like, that's so insane. And I don't know, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, what is it, imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, where yeah. you're like, that's, where you see yeah, it. It's real. Yes, it, where, it. you have it too. Yeah. Where you, you see it and you're so excited and you're so thankful for it, but it's almost like you're so thankful for it that you can't fathom that it's actually mm. you. So like, I have to pretend that it's like, well, that is part of it. But it's, yeah. so it's a kind of a weird, um, I mean, I'm talking to my therapist about it, like, before <laughs> I say that. Um, but yeah, still wrapping my head around it, but forever thankful. Totally. Forever, yeah. And you're, I mean, you're not just huge with your fans, though. Like, you just did Lollapalooza and Coachella this summer, and I felt like every band was, like, talking about you also. Oh. And, like, you have, uh, Pink is a huge fan. Mm -hmm. She covered your song, River. Yeah. I mean, you That's must huge. be feeling the love right now just it's, from everyone. It's been so surreal. And I think uh, mm -hmm. someone like Pink 
uh, inspires me so much because, again, she's someone that, you know, you don't even see a gender. You mm -hmm. just see talent and you see power. And mm. I think it's, we're so quick to kind of like put people in the same category because of their gender or because of their race. And it really bothers me. And I think sometimes with the music industry that can happen um, without even people realizing it. Like yeah. even if they're just like excited, but they're looping you in with someone that you're actually nothing like. Um, so someone like Pink doing that, I mean, I, I didn't know how to handle it. I mean, I feel like all I'm talking about is my family, but let's be real, they're my only friends. <laughs> but my sister um, was the one that first showed that to me, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And I think we have the pink tweet, um, but it's, yeah, it's such a huge, like, I mean, it's so amazing when, like, you know, your actual peers yeah, are yeah. out there promoting you, and, like, yeah, this is... Yeah. So Mine and my daughter's favorite. Oh my god, yeah. I cry! It's so oh. cool. It's on our whole set. You are a force, and I love to hear your power. Thank you. Oh yeah. my gosh, you guys. That is so great. She's yeah. awesome. Like, who are some other artists that you really yeah. love? Who, who, who else do I love? Yeah. I mean, I love Alabama Shakes. Oh god. Mm. So much. Yeah. She's so. Oh my god. Amazing, yeah. It's it's just it's insane and it's madness and it's power. It's yes. that same like yeah. Totally. Um, and I think kind of these past couple of years, I've been really into Alabama Shakes and Hosier were mm. kind of like the first. And then in terms of like who I grew up with, it was all like Etta James, Otis Redding, mm. Aretha Franklin, and then it went into land of Janis Joplin. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really oh, felt yeah. like I found myself yeah. because there wasn't that perfectionism that I think innately, maybe society-wise, I've been kind of conditioned mm. to lean towards that perfectionism. So the minute that I kind of started feeling as though I was coming into my own, I really, really tried to leave that at the side and just be raw and be real yeah. because my idols are all of those things. It's funny, you can hear a little bit of each of that too in you. Really? Yeah, you can. <gasps> oh my God. That's why I always love that question because it's just like, again, your, your voice is so strong and it's powerful and like the driving, like all that sort of, is a perfect mix. Oh my God, thank you. Yeah. You guest mentored on American Idol. Yes. Which is so cool that you've come to be now in a position where you get to talk to young performers, young uh, songwriters and musicians. And can you tell us a little about that experience yes. and working on that show? I, I definitely gave them zero advice. <laughs> <laughs> I was not helpful at all. Um, and actually right before I went on stage uh, with one of the artists, his name is Trevor. And right before we went on, I looked at him, I was like, oh my God, I'm so nervous, I'm literally shaking. And he just, <laughs> he looked at me like, are you serious? <laughs> and I was, I was like, grab my hand, like you won't believe how much it's shaking. And he was like, he was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is who is mentoring. mentoring me. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the other artist, his name is Cade. And when we were rehearsing, Apparently, okay, it's not apparently, it's true, but I messed up during our rehearsal that they like filmed. Uh -huh. Like they were like, wow, this is gonna be an incredible rehearsal. And like, I came in at the wrong time and he was like, it's okay, like it takes a while to, you know, um, get to know the song. I was like, it's my song. <laughs> like, I should know it. So anyways, I don't wanna say I was a mess, okay? Yeah. But I- You were allegedly a mess. Yeah. I mean, yeah, allegedly, like word around town is that I was. Um, no, but uh, it was an insane experience. And I did get asked like, you know, is there any advice and all this stuff? And kind of the main thing that I told them, I did not, I really want to make clear, I did not have any advice for like performance tips or yeah. any of that because there is something that it doesn't make sense in my brain to be critiquing soul. You know, I think there's something very pure about creativity and art. Um, so I, I didn't really have any commentary on that, but I, I just basically said like, don't get caught up in it mm -hmm. and remain true to yourself because ultimately uh, you can't lose then. Right. You know, it's like then, no matter if you have a bad day, which is inevitable, you'll be like, at least I was myself, you know, and I can, at least I can look myself in the mirror and be proud of what I did, even if it didn't get the response that I was hoping for. Because just the same as beauty, creativity, art, work, it's so subjective. Mm -hmm. right. So it's like you're not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. Um, but there is something liberating about that, I think, the minute that you fully accept it. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want you to be my life mentor. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Like you what? are like, yeah, more than like, this is more than an interview with like a musician. You're like a soul doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the things she 
saying? You're yeah. So no, you're being so real. It's really, oh, it's amazing. Call your album Soul Doctor. I know. Well, I want to put that in my bio. <laughs> I'm like also known as a soul a doctor. Soul doctor. Yeah. I yeah. mean, no, that's oh, just it's so great. great. So it's true. beautiful too because it's like you could see you're embodying that. Like sometimes people say things and they're like, "This is my advice," and you're like, "Okay, person," but mm -hmm. I could see that you are literally being yourself <laughs> and like just shining your inner light. And I think that's why we're all. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And when I, I have to say, when I was watching you guys, I did love how real you were. Um, and can I just say, loved that you were going on your rant about cats while having this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just like, there was like. She's living her truth. We said yeah. we're, we're yeah. living your truth. We're very yeah. on brand. Yeah, yeah. very on brand. Yeah. Very yeah. Living your truth. Yeah. No, but I think there is something about transparency that it's like, that's why we were all dying backstage. Like, Mm -hmm. listening to you guys because like I loved you talking about like God forbid the woman has a job and a successful relationship <laughs> yeah. and like it didn't show you guys laughing at that it yeah. just showed yeah. <laughs> you know it's like but it's yeah. just this thing where it's like yes like that should be something that is like crazy that like that isn't a thing that is mm -hmm. okay you know like that men and women they can both work and have a relationship and yeah. the woman can be powerful and strong and everything um, and it doesn't affect anything but anyways so I am Ooh, very, yeah. very yeah. Yeah. happy to be here. Yeah. And listen to Baby. It comes out Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Fisher, thank you thank so you. much thank for coming you. here. It's so cool. It's so great to meet you. Thank you. And everyone, yeah, make sure to listen to her new single, Baby. It's coming out this Friday. We'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same table. Yeah.